Hot on the heels of our latest So You Want a Blank Bike video where it appears we delivered an absolute slam dunk of a video, we thought we'd give Kawasaki some love and ask the question, so you filthy sport bike degenerate, you want a friggin' ZX6R, huh? Because you're just too cool for an R6. Or maybe it's the fact that you know the ZX6R is actually a real sweetheart of a super sports and was even featured a Cheater 636 engine for a while there. The ZX6 has a cult following and it's for a good reason. Unlike those who bleed orange, root for Rossi, or hell even behave as hardcore simps for Marquez over at Honda, the Cowie boys are different. Sure, you might peg them as complete Kyles who only know full yeet energy and crushing 8 cans of monster energy per day, putting them on the fast track to early onset diabetes. Quick side note guys, I knew a kid in high school who literally gave himself early onset diabetes because he drank like... 10 monster cans per day, don't do this, please just drink water, it's infinitely better for you. However, you'd be mistaken for thinking that. The Kawasaki ZX6 isn't merely the little brother to the big bad ZX10, it's a competent and awesome sport bike all on its own, and spoiler alert, it's my favorite Japanese 600 super sport. So to those who say I hate Kawasaki, suck on that. What's going on everyone, it's me once again, the fast talking gummy cube dropping bombs of motorcycle content onto your glistening cherubic faces once again. We're going to be taking a look at the ZX6 and constructing a buyer's guide of all the different generations, which one is my favorite and some things to look out for. Today's video is powered by Manscaped, I'll tell you guys more about them later but I'm sure you know the drill, Yami20 gets you 20% off of the finest no nick shaver for your balls known to man. Also, make sure you hit the link down below to yamidoop.co because guess what? I'm giving away a brand new R1 for free. Seriously, and three other bikes too. I'm a great bike baron who doles them out. Go and check that out and pick out some merch from yamidoopmerch.com as well and get entered to win those bikes. Every dollar you spend is an entry to win, so don't miss it. Now let's get into this. The Kawasaki line of ZX6 bikes begins back in 1990 with the ZZR600. This was before the concept of race replica 600s were a thing, and this was more in line with the Swiss Army Knife sport bikes of days past. However, if you look close, you can see the lineage of this ninja line and subtle design cues the Kawasaki followed to this day. This was an upright, comfortable, banana seat having 600 that didn't scream out revs, but rather approached the task of going down the road with dignity and simplicity. It has more in common with a sport touring bike of today than a screaming 600 race replica, but this is where the lineage began. Fast forward to 1995 and we get the first use of the ZX6R namesake. And look at this absolute gorgeous example of 90s ridiculousness. The hot pink tear graphics, the lime green, man, if we could get a new ZX6 with some 90s retro color schemes, I would be all over that. The ZX6R, much like how the R6 was meant to be the R1's little brother, was the little brother to the ZX9R. Now, I know this is getting a little confusing with all the numbers and letters, but back in the mid-90s, there wasn't really the concept of a 1000cc superbike just yet. Manufacturers were still playing around with the 750cc classes of bikes, 900ccs, open class bikes, and etc. The ZX9R along with the CBR 900RR were some of the last of these sub-leader class bikes, but it gave way for Kawasaki to make the ZX6R. When we looked at the R6, we mentioned how it was sold alongside another bike called the YZF600R, also known as the Thundercat, because of course it was known as that. The ZX6 from this generation has more in common with the YZF600R than with the actual first generation R6, because it was a bit more relaxed in the ergonomics department, featured a comfortable seat, and was much more of a livable motorcycle. The first gen ZX6 featured a 599cc inline 4, it can add about 90 horsepower, which hey, that doesn't sound like a lot by today's standards, but that was a healthy amount back then. It had carburetors, of course, 41mm right side up, non-adjustable forks, and it weighed, get ready for this one, 465 pounds. Oof, that is a bit of a porker, but remember, this wasn't a race replica just yet. Kawasaki was just getting started. In 1998, we see Kawasaki launch a bike that's much closer to the ZX6R we all know and love today. Low clip-ons, lower weight, and a screaming top-end punch, this to me is where the ZX6 truly begins. The second gen ZX6 had a high-revving 599cc inline-4 making 95 horsepower now, down from Yamaha's 100. 
an absolutely massive 46 millimeter upside down fully adjustable front suspension with a unitrack fully adjustable rear as well. Why did they slap on 46 millimeter forks? Who can say? Seriously, that is absolutely enormous and later generations stuck with the traditional 41 millimeter forks. Maybe it was leftover parts from a Dakar bike because that is mental. It was still carbureted, but now it had Makunis on it. Weight was down to 441 pounds, so progress was being made. This generation of ZX6 saw some minor upgrades and ran until 2003, when all of a sudden, everything changed. Kawasaki threw the whole super sport market for a loop and decided to drop in the legendary 636cc Cheater inline 4 into their sport bike. However, to stay homologated for racing classes, they also made it alongside a ZX6 RR, a 599cc proper race replica. So yes, in case you're wondering, there was a brief period in time where on dealership floors Kawasaki sold a ZX6R and a ZX6RR alongside each other. Again, people wonder why motorcycling is a niche thing. This generation is one of the most beloved by Kawasaki lovers. It has the same face as the Big Brother ZX10 and is one of the most iconic ninja bikes of all time. It's instantly recognizable and is a fantastic sport bike. With a wet weight of 418 pounds, 41 millimeter fully adjustable forks and a fully adjustable rear suspension, this little beast was ready to party. The Cheater inline 4 made 122 horsepower at the Ram Air intake, with the 2005 and 2006 generations making up to 130 horsepower, which is a very potent amount of power for that power plant. Kawasaki made the 636 variant until 2007 until they decided it was time to bring it on back and make a single 600cc class sport bike again. The first gen 636 is a legendary bike and those who own it know what's up. Now, you know who else knows what's up? Manscaped. In fact, they know what's up and what's down, and nobody does it better for down than them. Was that the weirdest lead-in for an ad? Probably, but look, fellas, and I do mean fellas because guess what? Over here on Yami Noob, it's 96% males. Seriously, look at this screen cap from our analytics. If there's a comment down below, odds are it's a dude, and if the profile picture is of a girl, it's probably still a dude, so don't fall for it. Here's the deal. Manscaped makes the finest in male grooming products, and you know it's even better than whooping ass on a Yamaha R6 with your 36 extra cubes of displacement being aerodynamic and smooth while you do it. Right now, fans of the Yam get 20% off their order at Manscaped using the link down below and the code YAMI20 at checkout. They have thousands of five-star reviews, patented ceramic blades with no nick technology. You'll be asking yourself why you didn't use their products sooner. So again, YAMI20 at checkout gets you 20% off and you'll be feeling fresh. So it was 2007, and look, I'm not saying Kawasaki caused the collapse of the global economy by getting rid of the 636, but you can't tell me they're not related. In 2007, they debuted a new look for the ZX6R and returned the regular 600cc engine. They iterated upon the platform, making subtle changes here and there, and then in 2009 to 2012, they had another version. Same 600cc engine, no major changes, and one thing I want to point out is that Yamaha brought out the spankin' fresh R6 in 2006 and left it unchanged for over a decade, all while Kawasaki continuously made improvements and updated their bikes, so maybe Yamaha didn't have the best 600. Just kidding, the R6 is wonderful, we all know this. Then in 2013, Kawasaki did the unthinkable. They turned to their engineers and said, boys, we're bringing the 636 engine back. And they launched the 2013 to 2018 ZX6R with the 636cc engine. Now this is my favorite ZX6R, and I've had the pleasure of riding one of these out in Jerez last year, and boy, they are good. This generation of ZX6 got hit with the electronic zap ray and it received traction control and rider modes. It was an all new bike with a new frame and an updated engine and man, it is a hell of a ride. These bikes really rip on track and they do super well as a road bike. Kawasaki sold plenty of them. In 2019, Kawasaki updated the ZX6 once again, but this time they did something interesting. They slashed the price and they made it much more road bias. They eased up on the ergonomics, made it slightly softer and gave you a quick shifter as standard equipment. It was an interesting move, but you can't really argue with the ZX6's price point nowadays. The non-ABS model has an MSRP of under $10,000. That is wild. So what should you look for when you're buying a ZX6? Let's take a look. Many users reported that in the 2005 to 2006 ZX6s had shoddy gearboxes and were prone to failures. Many others also said that the 2004 models also ran pretty hot and had trouble starting. 
Another thing to look for is that Kawasaki brakes are notorious for seizing up and need more regular maintenance than normal. The first generation bikes also had carb icing in the winter months. However, those are pretty esoteric things that I found online and overall people report these bikes to be unbelievably robust. Particularly in the track day scene, which is why they're probably as common if not more common than your garden variety R6. As an anecdote, user Auto Man on a ZX6 R forum who is a Wera expert level racer according to his tag said, my first track bike was an 05636 and I probably crashed that thing four or five times. Sold it and the new owner proceeded to crash it another five to eight times. I believe he sold it and I'm sure that person has wrecked it at least once or twice and it's still going as far as I know. Connecting rod rumor is just that. So for me, any bike that can live through 10 on-track crashes and still be rolling is a hell of a machine. And I'll say it now, if the Daytona 675R didn't exist, I might have picked up a 636 as my track bike because they really are that good. I really do like riding them, they work super well, they have tons of front end feel, they're very communicative, forgiving, and they teach you a lot. They're awesome motorcycles for a large swath of people, and I just think they're really cool. I hope you guys enjoyed this look into Kawasaki's beloved middleweight super sport. What do you think? Did we miss anything? I'm sure we did because it's tough to condense years and years of history into a short video on the internet, but let me know down below. Thanks again to Manscaped for supporting the video, and remember guys, Yamaha R1 being given away. Brand new. Seriously, go click the link down below at yamanoob.co and check it out. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later. Backed. Crying makes you feel better, reduces stress, and may help the body stay healthy. So to all the Suzuki boys out there, just let it out. Goodbye.